This is Shelley Kraft coming to you live on SNN Live. We're at the Aegis Capital Corp Investment Growth Conference here in Las Vegas 2016. With me is Russell Skibstead from Biotime. It's a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange, and the symbol is BTX. Russell, welcome to SNN Live. Thank you, Shelley, for having me on today. It's good to have you. Let's start out with an overview on Biotime, if you would. Well, Biotime has been in existence for quite a while now um, and really came into it, had a rebirth in about 2007 where we moved from a plasma extender company into a regenerative medicine company. During that period of time, our co-CEO, Mike West, went around the world and really consolidated I would say all of the key regenerative medicine assets into one patent portfolio. And then we began developing those, those programs. Today, we have two clinical programs, one of which is in a registrational study in Europe, and another that we expect to have data coming out a little bit later this year in dry AMD. We also own public shares in two public companies that were essentially spinoffs of Biotime. And the value of those are upwards of $140 million at this time. Let's focus on science. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the, not the origination of Biotime as a plasma extender company, but let's focus on the stem cell side of the company mm -hmm. and what it can be used for, you know, what are some of the programs working towards healing, uh, treatments, I never use the word cure, but you know what I'm going. Sure. Well, it's a good question because when you hear regenerative medicine, when you hear stem cells, you tend to think, well, stem cells, it's all one thing. They're all alike, right? And the truth is they're not. And um, there are different ones. Adult stem cells, uh, mesenchymal, you have induced pluripotent, you have pluripotent stem cells. And our company is really based on the pluripotent technology. Pluripotent is really the stem cells that are capable of doing anything. So they start out in a nascent stage. And the key, and, and this is one of the, the keys that Mike brought some of this technology together, was how do you actually get that stem cell to do anything? Because as a stem cell, it's just a possibility. But Mike, as part of our Pluristem program, he actually was able to differentiate 200 different tissue types from this Pluristem stem cells. And at this point, we have in cell banks 200 different tissue types. And it's these tissue types that we're now using for programs like our dry AMD program. Give me an example of this Pluristem stem cell, how you can uh, create a treatment for any particular disease so that we bring it down to what investors can relate to so that we, you know, kind of simplify it. Well, I'll try. Um, our, our, one of our clinical programs, Operagen, is a, uh, a cell therapy that is developed for dry AMD. So age-related AMD is macular degeneration, and it's a leading cause of blindness in people over 60. Uh, in fact, my eye doctor said I'm starting to get some, some damage in my eyes. And what is the cause of that, and how do you, how do you deal with it? Well, there is a, a single layer of cells that surround, we'll call it the important parts of the eye, and it protects those those cells on the inside. As we get older, we lose some of these cells. And the damage that occurs can lead to either wet AMD or dry AMD. Wet AMD, there are a couple of therapies for right now, Lucenta, Silea. Combined, they sell about $5 billion a year. But dry AMD, uh, there's currently no uh, therapy. There's nothing. In fact, my doctor said, well, wear sunglasses when you go outside. Now, uh, the the key for dry AMD is that for every one AMD, one wet AMD patient, there are nine dry AMD patients. It's a huge unmet need. So a lot of companies, as you can imagine, are looking at different ways to solve this problem. Well, the way that we're using is we've taken those pluripotent stem cells, we've differentiated them into RPE cells, they're, and we'll go into the, it's the name this long, but essentially it's these cells that we lose as we get older. And uh, what the doctor does is goes in and just essentially fills in where the cells are missing with new RPE cells. 
Now, it's currently in a clinical study. We need to make sure that it's safe. We need to make sure there isn't an immune reaction. But the question then becomes, by putting that protective layer back in, is that going to, A, stop the progression of the disease, or at least slow it down significantly? And then, second of all, will it help to reverse the disease and bring some vision back to people. So we don't know that yet. That's in the trial, and we expect data to come out later this year. You, you raise, you know, an idea in my head. Does the stem cell have to be from the patient being treated? No. That's the nice part about this. We differentiated from a single pluripotent stem cell source, and we built this cell line of RPE cells that we grow and manufacture similar to a biologic and then we keep taking those, they're not stem cells, they're actually the RPE cells in the eye and we put those in. So it's similar to, if you think about when you take a picture off the wall and you have a, a nail hole, you go get some spackle at Home Depot and you fill it in and they paint it and you look and you say, oh, now it's back to wall. That's what we're doing with RPE cells, not stem cells. I actually understood that. Well, that's because I'm a CFO and not a scientist. <laughs> so over the course of the last six months, what are some of the other developments that are going on in biotime? Well, you know, regenerative medicine. Basically, just catch me up. Sure, sure. A lot has been going on. And, um, and in fact, one, one really significant thing just recently occurred. And that is um, uh, our one of our public companies that we, um, we own almost half of, Asterius Biotherapeutics, announced some data in their OPC1 trial for uh, patients with spinal cord injury. Mm -hmm. And um, what they announced was, and, and showed, in fact, USC showed uh, a video and there was a lot of news on it, is that these patients who were essentially quadriplegic after auto accidents um, regained the use of their arms and hands. And for people familiar with spinal cord injury, that is a huge benefit to people. And um, with the data that was uh, Asterius released um, earlier this month, they showed that actually there was motor improvement in um, all five of the first cohort of patients. And this was even at a lower dose than uh, their, the next cohort will be at a higher dose level. So we're really encouraged by the results from this. Um, and as Mike West says, that's why we say that not all stem cells are created equally. It, the pluripotent stem cell foundation is the one that will be successful over time. And it's what we believe strongly in. Our OPC1 program is based on that. Or, our, uh, our Operagen program is based on the same type of technology. So we're excited, but as you look at regenerative medicine, there's a graveyard of failures. But you've got companies that are trying to re-engineer pluripotency. You have you know, mesenchymal, you've got uh, adult stem cells, and these ha have their uses, but they're not the broad use that pluripotent stem cell technology has. And that's, you know, we look at, at the OPC1 data that was just released and, and we really are uh, looking forward to the data we're going to get with, the, uh, with our Operagen program. Thank you. Now, it's almost the end of 2016. We're heading into the fourth quarter. We're going into 2017. From your perspective, and only tell me what you can, allowed sure. to, as a public company, what are some of the milestones you'd like to see Biotime achieve in the next, let's say, 18 months? Thank you. The, well, the first is we expect data from the Operagen program later this year from the second cohort, after which, with the DSMB approval, we should then move into the third cohort, which is a higher dose and what we think is a more therapeutically relevant dose. Um, <clears throat> and then by roughly second quarter, we'd expect that cohort to be over and to start the much larger phase two portion of the trial. Um, that's a key one. And then the other one is in our uh, aesthetics program. We have a registrational study that is going on in Europe right now in uh, HIV-related lipoatropy. So it's 
patients with HIV that take certain retroviral drugs get this face lo a facial fat loss, and it gives them the gaunt look, and it's really a problem for patients because they feel sick, people look at them, they go, ooh, what's wrong with you? And so we're, we're using this as a way to, to build up their, you know, the face. And so that trial we expect to be fully enrolled shortly, and then the data to read out on that we'll call second quarter of next year. That data, we should be able to get approval hopefully in Europe, providing a successful trial. We expect to get the uh, approval in Europe and some other countries. Separate from that, another milestone that we're looking at is then using that data package along with a new trial in the US to actually get, the, get this, uh, this therapy that we're using approved in the United States, but as in the more broader label of facial lipoatropy, whether from retroviral drugs whether from trauma or from age, because one of the biggest causes of the loss of facial fat is aging. And so we expect to, to enter that much larger uh, uh, field with the study we'll do in the United States. Let's get some information out to our audience. Uh, which website would you like to give our investor audience? I would say the, the, the best west website for us is www.biotimeinc. Dot com. It's B-I-O-T-I-M-E-I-N-C dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Skibstead, Biotime. It's a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange, and the symbol is B-T-X. I'm Shelley Kraft. This is Eston and Live, and we're coming to you live from the Aegis Capital Corp Investment Growth Conference in Las Vegas, 2016. Russell, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you, Shelley. I enjoyed it. You're quite welcome.